Good morning. We're going to start in just a couple of minutes. If you'd like to grab a last cup of tea or coffee and then come and find a seat and we'll begin in just a moment.
Good morning and welcome to church, everybody. Hopefully you've got one of these palm crosses. I wonder if you can hold it up and give me a wave. If you haven't got one, there'll be some at the back for you. It's so good to be with you this morning. I'm sorry we're a bit delayed in starting our service this morning. We've got a bit of a problem, as you can probably see with our screen. But the side screens are working, so we've decided to go ahead with this service and use those. Welcome to this special service this morning, where it is wonderful to have Holy Trinity joining us this morning. Welcome, Holy Trinity. We're looking forward to hearing from you a little later on in the service, where you're going to be singing for us and leading us in some prayers. Also, a very big warm welcome to the family of Gabriel, who we're going to be baptizing shortly. It's an important day today for Gabriel as he joins our family. And it's a privilege and a joy to be sharing that this morning together as part of our worship. Welcome to all of you who are joining us online this morning. We are so glad that you're able to join with us in this way. We're going to be worshipping Jesus together this morning and all you need for the songs you will find on the side screens. Please do join in as you feel able. If you need to move so that you can see their words, then please do your best. Sarah Jones will be bringing us our talk later in the service, and we look forward to hearing from her. If it's your first time with us this morning and you would like to know what we've got going on this spring in our church, then please do speak to Sarah or myself at the end of the service. We'd love to share with you all the exciting things that we have going on. So as we come together now, please may I invite you to stand as we begin our time together with a prayer. Father God, let us worship this morning with joy, with gratitude, and with respect. Hosanna to the Son of David, to God's anointed one, the King who rides on a donkey. King of kings, we gather and we clamor here to worship you this morning. You are not carrying an orb and a scepter, but you are the King of kings serving and loving and caring for each one of us. We come to worship you, to sit at your feet this morning, to hear your word, to know your truth. Bless us as we worship you together this morning, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Nick and the band are now going to lead us in our worship song. So as Kat says, use the side screens. But I want to encourage you, if you've got a phone, I'm going to say the next two songs we're going to sing are Praise is Rising and All Through History. Look up the lyrics if you want to join in if you're in the middle and you can't see. Sometimes that works really well. Um, We won't be offended if we see you on your phones because we know why. Um, So that's what we're going to do. And in this story this morning, it's Palm Sunday. And as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, people cried, Hosanna which means, Lord, save us. So we're going to sing, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. And as we sing Hosanna, feel free to wave those crosses, those palm crosses in the air as we do so. Praise is rising. Oh, love. 
Thank you. Please do sit down. And if I can invite the parents and the godparents of Gabriel to come up to the front and join me on the stage now, that would be wonderful. It's so wonderful to be get baptizing Gabriel this morning. We're really rather blessed in this church to have quite such a spectacular font. And while they're making their way up, perhaps you might like to look very carefully at the font. And at the top, you can see, painted on the wooden 
bit at the top, a gold dove. And when we bless the water in the font in a minute, when we're ready to, gab- to baptize Gabrielle, during the prayer of blessing that I will pray, I will include the part of the story of Jesus being baptized. Rather than having water poured on his head, Jesus' cousin John would have plunged him right under the water. And as Jesus came out of the water, heaven opened, and God's Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. Then Jesus heard God speak to him, and he said, You are my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And we believe that during Gabriel's baptism, that although we may not see it, the water is poured over his head so that God's Spirit will descend upon him. And as it does, it will start the beginning of his Christian journey. And it's our prayer this morning that Gabriel would grow up and that as his parents and godparents will encourage him to keep the promises that they are about to make on his behalf, that they would come to know God and hear him speak so that Gabriel may hear those words said to him, Gabriel, you are my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. It's wonderful to be baptizing Gabriel this morning. We have Charlotte and Elliot. These are more of our friends from Teeny Saints. So it's really lovely to have you and his sister Hattie with us this morning. They're regulars on Thursday morning when the church looks a little bit different to how it looks now. But there's much that is the same because we have stories and singing and fellowship and coffee together. So welcome to Godparents Rachel, Richard, Charlie and Stephanie. We're so glad that you've been able to join us this morning. Everything that you need is in your yellow booklets. So Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. We thank God for Gabriel who has come to be baptized today. Christ loves him and welcomes him into his church. So I ask everyone here today these two questions, and the answer is, in case you can't see the screen, we will. Oh, brilliant, you can. (laughs) That will make it a bit easier for us all, won't it? Will you support this child as he begins his journey of faith? We will. Will you help him to live and grow within God's family? Parents and godparents, God knows each of us by name, and we are his. Parents and godparents, you speak for Gabriel today. Will you pray for him and help him to follow Christ? We We all wander far from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I ask parents and godparents... Do you turn away from sin? Do Do you reject evil? Do Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do Do you trust in him as Lord? Gabriel, I'm going to sign you with the sign of the cross. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. (laughs) we say together stand bravely with him oppose the power of evil and remain his faithful disciple to the end of your life gabriel may almighty god deliver you from the powers of darkness restore you in the image of his glory and lead you into the light and obedience of christ amen Now, will you all come with me to the font? Children, if you want to come and have a better look at the font, please do come down. The font is by the door of the church because it begins our journey of faith. So do you want to just move around a bit so we can... So this is just normal tap water, but we're going to pray and ask God to use it for this special moment now. Okay. Right. Father God, we praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, 
He was baptized in the River Jordan, where your spirit came upon him and revealed him as the son you love. He sent his followers to baptize all who turned to him. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this water, that Gabriel, who is to be baptized in it, may be cleansed in the water of life and filled with your spirit. May he know that he is loved as your child, safe in Christ forever. Amen. Before we baptize Gabriel, we're going to affirm our faith together. The words of responses are hopefully on the screens. Let us all affirm together our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father, source of all being and life, the one from whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I have been looking forward to this, I have to say. (laughs) Charlotte and Elliot, you have named this child. Do you call him Gabriel, Charlie, Michael? Gabriel, Charlie, Michael. I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well done. Should we give him a clap? <laughs> Just going to pray for you now. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, so that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just welcome him now. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Gabriel, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We say together on the orders of surface, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. So Anne is going to light a candle for you both now. We've got one for you and one for Hattie. Shall shall I give it? There you are, Hattie. Would you like to hold that for Gabriel for us? And we've got a Bible. So give that to Hattie to hold for Gabriel as well. We've been running out of hands, haven't we? Brilliant. So there's a lighted candle and a Bible to guide you in life as you walk with Jesus and to remind you of his love for you. Just a few more words for us to say now. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Wonderful. Shall we give them a final clap? Uh, Brilliant. I think Nick's going to lead us in our next song now. I'd love to invite you to stand if you're able. In baptism, uh, we're marked with the sign of the cross, symbol of God's love over us in Jesus. And we're going to, as a response to that, and as a prayer over us, we're going to do the same for ourselves. So um, again, any children want to come up, do some actions with us. This song says, I sign your cross over me, a reminder that I am free. So we're going to sing this together in response to what we've just done.
Father God, we thank you that you sign your cross over us. Thank you that you are in the midst of us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, and please do sit down. Holy Trinity, if I can invite you up, if you're with Holy Trinity and you're going to be seeing, Laura Ann's going to bring us our notices while Holy Trinity gets ready. Okay, so um, Holy Trinity are going to come and set themselves up here. Frankie, go sit in that chair for me, and I'll come and sit with you in a minute. There. There you go. Well done, Frankie. Um, I have a few notices to give you. Um, So, obviously, we are starting Holy Week. And as of tomorrow, uh, there will be a Lego interactive trail for uh, the children, or those at young at heart, in the churchyard. Um, You will need a mobile phone for you to be able to um, for you you to be able to view that. So you'll scan a QR code. It will then show a video, and you watch a video. So please do come into the churchyard. That will be up for about three weeks. Also on Good Friday, we have a service here at 9:30 a.m., and we would love you to join us 
Um, at, following that, at 10.30, we will be gathering in the park for a short service, and then we will walk together behind the cross to the Methodist Church for an all-age service at 11.15. And if two services aren't enough, we've got a third. We've got a 12 noon, three hours uh, at the cross, which will be held at Marlow Bottom. And then, of course, Sunday Easter, Sunday morning, we will be here again at 9.15 and then um, 10.59. And we are having an Easter egg hunt at the end of our 10.59 service and baptism. So please do join us. Um, And now I'm going to hand over to um, Holy Trinity, who are going to lead us in um, a song and also some prayers.
That's so amazing. We're going to pray together now. Okay? Oh, yeah. Let's pray. One, two, three. Dear God, we remember that you died for us to take away our sins, that people respected and still respect you when you rode in on a donkey on Palm Sunday. Please help us not to act like Judas did by betraying you, and that if we act like him, we ask for your forgiveness. Thank you that Jesus rose from the dead and that you sent the Holy Spirit back <coughs> down after him. We thank you for all you have done for us. We, we pray that you will remember this, this Easter and, and what you have done for us. Amen. Amen. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for leading us in prayer and such an amazing song as well. Guys, do you want to come and sit down here? In a moment, we're going to have our Bible reading, but not quite yet. Because first of all, we're going to have a quick quiz. So do you want to sit down, guys? Now, in our house at the moment, two members of our family are learning to drive. So we've had to find the highway code, dust it off, and start learning all about road signs and symbols. And I thought, you know, some of them are here. I thought we'd give them a bit of a quick help, see what you guys know. So we're going to have team A on this side and team B on this side. Josh and Willow, I think you're going to help me be the team leaders. Josh, did you know this? This was pre organized. So, Josh, if you want to come over here, you're going to be the team leader for team A. Willow, you're going to be the team leader for team B. Can we have our first PowerPoint up, if that's all right? We're really hoping it's going to work brilliant. Okay. So, we're going to have this team first, right? You're going to count the points. Hopefully, it's going to be two tens. Hopefully, it will be a draw, but we'll see. Okay. So, for team A, first sign. What do you think that means? Hands up, you've got to choose someone. Hands up, anyone know? Okay, ooh, what, Mrs. Fields, what do you think? Slippery road, that is correct. So team A, you have one point. Okay, right, team B, number two. I need to be careful not to say what it is. What do we think that is? Choose someone, Willow, mummy. Danger, falling rocks, brilliant, well done. So we've got one point here and one point out. Okay, we're gonna get a bit harder. Team A, what does number three mean? Any idea? Do you wanna choose someone, Josh? Laura Ann, does she know? Yeah. I think it's a historical landmark. Oh, do you wanna be a bit, anyone else on your team wanna be a bit closer? Do you wanna choose someone? What is it, Joy? A battle site few. Yes, okay, so two points there. Okay, the next one. A bit unusual, maybe not in the UK. What do we think this sign is? Willow, do you want to choose somebody? A llama crossing. Beware the llamas are crossing. Well done. That was a bit easy, wasn't it? So we got two and two points. Okay, next slide. A bit harder now. Josh, if that's right. Okay, this is a bit harder for team A. What do we think this is? Right, Josh, do you want to, anyone have their hands out? John. Oh, not quite. Anyone else on this team want to help him out? Do you want to choose someone at the back? Yeah. No. <gasps> Oh, no. We're going to have to go over to Team B. I'm sorry, Team A. Oh, no, this is a bit acrimonious. Right, anyone on this side know what it is? I know what it is. Do you know what it is, Willow? Do you want to risk it? Do you want to ask someone else who really knows? Anyone really know? <laughs> Matthew. Yeah, it's an air museum. We'll give you that. Okay, oh, we're getting close now. Okay, so the last side, this is this side. It's a bit harder. So, Team B, what do we think number six is? This is an Australian sign. <laughs> right, shh, shh. anyone guessing? Any guessing? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Okay, we've got someone at the back. Do you want to shout out? Well done. Yes, well done. So, what does that mean? How many points do you have, Team A? And how many points do you have? Two. 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 <laughs> You're ready to go. So, team, so I think we have a winner. How many points do you have? 
Oh, you don't know? <laughs> Four. Thank you so much. Let's give Team B a clap. Well done. Thank you, guys. You want to sit down? Right. Can we have our next sign up, Josh? So, Josh, if we have our next sign, say thank you. So, signs to us as we drive down the road, we know what they mean, don't we? They're a symbol, but they have a deeper meaning. And in a moment, in our Bible reading, guys, can I ask the three readers to come up and have, in our Bible reading, there is a powerful symbol This is a powerful symbol of something with a much deeper meaning. It's what we're celebrating today. And it's something that people in Jerusalem would have completely understood. But for us, we don't quite know. So we've got to work out what this symbol means today. So before these guys read, and you're going to do it in parts, aren't you? You're going to read from Mark 11. Can anyone tell me what a cult is? A cult Anyone know what it is? We're going to have a picture, but don't put it up yet. Do you know what a cult is? A baby donkey. A baby donkey. Can we have a picture of a baby donkey up, please? There we go. Very cute. Right. Now, have a listen. As these guys read, I want you to count how many times the word cult comes up. It's quite a few. And also, very strangely, the number of times tying untying and tide comes up, okay? Because that's quite a lot too. So you've got to be counting and listening and looking at our next picture, Josh, as well. We have our next picture. Brilliant. So over to you guys. Shall I hold the mic or you're okay? You're going to put that up higher. Let's maybe hold it. Yeah. Okay. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Unite it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing on tying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, bless. Blessed is who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Brilliant. You guys read so well. Do you want to come and have a sit down? Well done. That is so good. So, did anyone count? How many times did you get the word cult? How many times is it mentioned? Yes? Four. Anyone advance on four? It was four. (laughs) Okay, and how many times did the passage mention tying or untying the cult? Five. Brilliant. You guys are amazing. You listen so well. So, in the Bible, when repetition happens like that, we have to ask why? Why does Mark keep talking about the cult? Why does he keep talking about untying and tying? Well, in the same way that we know what the road signs mean, this was a massive symbol for God's people. They knew what it meant because they knew the Old Testament. You see, we've got another image coming up. Around 500 years before, the prophet Zechariah had prophesied that Judah um, would overcome our enemies. Um, and sorry, yes, in th- this verse came up. Can we read it? It says, See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So, 500 years before the coming king was prophesied, and that is how he would come into Jerusalem. You see, Jesus didn't usually ride a donkey. In fact, nobody coming to Jerusalem for the festival 
would have ridden the donkey. Everybody would have walked. That was expected of him. So the fact that Jesus comes riding a donkey, well, that is big news. Theologian Graham Tomlin, this is for the adults, says that hire, it is like hiring a presidential limousine to drive into the U.S. Capitol. It's pretty crazy unless you are the president. So that is the first thing that we see Jesus is saying. He is the coming king. Isn't that amazing? Very quickly, what about the tying and untying five times? Why does Mark keep saying that again and again? Well, again, there's an Old Testament illusion in Genesis 49, and it says the coming king is going to tie and untie the colt. It says that. He's, it says he's going to untie and tie the donkey. He's going to be the coming ruler, the true king. So Jesus is saying something very, very profound. But of course, he comes on A colt on a donkey, that's not very impressive, really, is it? If he was coming as a strong king, he'd probably come on a war horse. But he didn't. He came on a humble donkey. Jesus came into Jerusalem not to conquer, but to be conquered. Jesus came into Jerusalem to die, to give his life as a ransom for us. The people cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. We heard that read, didn't we? But what did they want saving from? Did they want saving from the Romans? Probably. But Jesus was coming to save them from so much, uh, something so much bigger, something so much greater. Now, children, I've got someone very special coming to see us, and I need your help. I've got some palm branches here, and I would love you to put them down the aisle Can you do that for me? Because in a moment, we've got a celebrity coming. We've got some cloaks to put down as well. So we're just going to get ready, and then we're going to see who's coming. Hello. Hi. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure if I'm late, but I just wanted to come and tell you all about that amazing day you've been talking about. See, I carry Jesus. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got to get the palm branches ready for you guys. Put them on the floor. We've got, who are you? This is amazing. Yeah. I, well, I'm the donkey that carried Jesus, and it was such a great day. Everyone was praising him, shouting Hosanna, laying palms and coats out just like this. Wow, so you're the donkey that carried Jesus. That is amazing. Yeah. Guys, do you want to let the donkey come through? He's coming through. You've got palm leaves, we've got coats. <gasps> Who's this come up here? We're so amazed to have you. This is flown in I, through a time portal. Well, I, I, would have, I would have preferred a red carpet, but, but it's okay. Um, but it... It kind of went all wrong after this. Um, you see, I thought I'd be a star. Okay, let me just use, let me give you this, because you're a celebrity, you need I, to have I, this, yes. Thank you, that seems about right, actually. Um, I, you know, I thought I'd be a celebrity. The king's donkey, a star. King's donkey. Youngest down, donkey ever on social media. Wow. All of that. But um, then they went and arrested and killed Jesus. And it was quite shameful, really. Oh, donkey. I just... Awesome. It wasn't what I expected or wanted. I thought Jesus was going to get rid of the Romans. Yes. He, he had the power, but I, I just never really understood it. Oh, donkey, you're a bit sad then, really. Yeah, and I don't understand why you guys all here remembering it. We are remembering Palm Sunday here. That's right. Well, it's amazing you're here. Thank you so much for coming. We are celebrating today because Jesus was a king. It wasn't shameful. It was the most amazing day and Jesus chose you as a young donkey because he came to bring peace. He came to be a different kind of king, not a king on a war horse, but a king on a a young donkey. Jesus said he did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life for all people. That sounds quite upside down, though. It is a little bit upside down. Jesus is a bit different. He always changes everything upside down. Can we have our next slide, Josh? If we have a look here. You see, Jesus' crown was a crown of thorns. And Jesus' throne, well, it was the cross. And Jesus didn't have anyone serving him. Jesus was the one who washed other people's feet Can everyone hold up your palm crosses? Look, donkey, you see, we've all got palm crosses. Have you shown them? Do you see? 
You see, our palm branches today, they're not like these palm branches. They're in the shape of a cross because it is the cross that reminds us how much we are loved by God. It's through Jesus' death on the cross that we are restored back into relationship with God. We're freed, we're, we're forgiven, we're released. We get to live a new life with God and nothing can ever, ever separate us from his love ever again. So that is really good news. That is why we're waving our palm crosses today. Wow, I, I never knew that. People, people were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, the day that I carried Jesus. And, and that means save us, save us. So I guess Jesus was doing just that, but in a different way to what I expected. You've got it in one donkey, that's right. It was Jesus coming to save us, but just in a really different way than, than we could have ever possibly imagined. Wow. So I can be proud of that day I carried Jesus. Yeah, totally. Totally, you can be absolutely proud of that day. It was a wonderful day. You did a great job. <laughs> and so many, day, so many of God's promises were filled that day. Some of those promises that we've looked at. It's a day when Jesus showed us what kind of God it is we follow, a God of love, a God of hum, humility, a God of sacrifice. And that's the kind of people that we are to be if we follow Jesus we are to be a people who love one another, who serve one another, who are humble. Isn't that worth celebrating? Yeah. Shall we give Donkey a big round of applause? Thank you so much for coming today. And we're going to um, do some prayers now. We're going to hand out some bubbles. But as we do that, uh, so I think Nick is going to, uh, we're going to sing uh, that beautiful song again, Sign Your Cross Over Me. And as we do so, let's hold our palm crosses as we sing. And then can my helpers come and help? We're going to all hand out. Um, you're going to have a little uh, bubble tube. We've got 120. I think we'll probably double that. So maybe adults, maybe share with a child or just share between one and two. And then Laura Ann's going to lead us as we use our bubbles to pray together.
Uh, we are going to pray together now. So children, hold off blowing the bubbles because you're going to run out and you're going to need them in your prayers, okay? Um, so as you've realized, we've got some bubbles to help us pray this morning. Um, so, um, but yeah, like we said, if you might need to share with the person next to you. Um, so very, ch- if you haven't already, gently turn the top and open your bubbles. Um, and thank you, Sarah. And our first prayer is to praise and thank God. So as you blow the bubbles, I want you to have a think of something to thank Jesus for. (laughs) You want to go down? So think about what you want to thank Jesus for. So thank you, Jesus, for your unconditional love for us. Thank you for all the good things that you give us. You provide for us every day. We thank you for this world that we live in and for all its creatures. Thank you for every breath that we take. And we want to praise you, Lord. Amen. Okay, and so now our second prayer is going to be saying sorry to God for the wrong things we've done and uh, the times that maybe we've hurt others. So as you blow the bubbles, I want you to think of something that you want to say sorry to God for. Let's pray. We are sorry, Lord God, for when we are selfish and unkind, when we live for ourselves and not for you, when we disobey you and we do things that make you sad. Please forgive us and restore us back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what you can do now is you could pop those bubbles to remind you that you are forgiven. So you can pop them and then you're forgiven. Finally, our third prayer. We are going to blow some bubbles and pray for those who are struggling or need God's help. So as you blow the bubbles, think of those people who you know need God's love. Let's pray. Lord God, we pray now for those we know and love who are hurting or who are unwell. For those that are lonely and scared, please protect and care for them. And Lord, we pray for all those that do not know you. We pray that they will hear the good news and turn to you. Please bring all these people your peace, which passes all understanding. And we pray all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you. So children, if you might want to put your lids back on your bubbles and you can take those home with you and you can use those bubbles to pray at any time during the coming week and you can always refill it up with very liquid at home. We're nearly coming to the end of our service here this morning. We are so pleased that so many of you have joined us. There is a civic service this afternoon at... Is it three (laughs) o'clock? At three o'clock to celebrate everything good that has been going on in Marlow over the last year, in which you are welcome to join. At 6.30 this evening, we have our informal service. So if this morning has just got you warmed up and you'd like to come back for some more worship, then do come and join us this evening at 6.30. As usual, our prayer ministry team met before our service this morning and... um, They would love to pray after this service for anyone, but particularly for someone who has been vomiting a lot, someone who might like prayer for an injured leg, someone who has a problem with their teeth, and someone that has anger management issues. If any of those things are relevant to you, we'd love to pray for you in the prayer chapel after the service. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please do stay for tea and coffee. And Nick is going to lead us now in our final song. to live one. 
Wonderful. We're just going to end with a blessing. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may live in your hearts by faith and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your Sundays.